Uh, yes, to he's an economist and former CBN deputy governor. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us today, and good to see you as well. Um, good nation, good people. <laughs> All right. They, they, the government, uh, they're working on different things, different state governments. We just heard from the NGO themselves as well. Uh, part of their plan is to get stimulus packages, get uh, supplies, utilities to those who need it, because we know that we have a huge population of those who eke live in the work on a daily basis to get some of those things. So having heard uh, even the ones that the federal government is carrying out in the wake of this lockdown in some of these states, as announced by them, how far-reaching do you think that those can be? Well, um, we hope that they will reach as many people that need uh, these palliatives as much as possible. Uh, one of the constraints is, of course, lack of data. We don't have a social mapping of vulnerable groups in this country. And so a lot of it will be based on guesstimates as to where such people, who those people are, where they live, and so on. You don't want to end up giving food to those who really already have more than enough, but really targeting the most vulnerable, and, and particularly the destitute and, and the physically handicapped. Uh, people are the lowest uh, order of society. Uh, who would really be under serious difficulty at this time? Uh, because many of them live from day to day. You know, the mama that sells akara, that sells akamu by the corner, and, you know, and all those people, the, the vulcanizer, they live on a daily basis from the income they make uh, on a daily basis. And so we have to be very sensitive uh, to the needs of this, this particular category of people. You know, the, the, the governor of Ikiti State, uh, we did ask him that question as well. And he says, well, did you have data? And he, he was particular about non-partisan data, as it were, that it was such that everyone can leverage on and then deliver based on all of those. But when you just talk about those who uh, Ike living on a daily basis, but we also do know that it's not just about those people as well. You have several others in different categories uh, who they've announced certain measures. For instance, uh, I think yesterday they were talking about those who were living in satellite areas or satellite towns. Uh, this, the ministry will also reach out to those people. So for those people, for instance, when they do get across to them, uh, Will those supplies achieve the desired impact? Because we also have to get back to them and see uh, the frequency with which all of those supplies will come. Well, um, every little will help uh, because this is a very difficult time uh, for everyone, but most especially for the vulnerable group. I mean, uh, uh, there, are, there are limited resources, obviously, and I don't think that, you know, there's been a massive stockpile. Uh, but the state governments can dip into some of their, you know, resources and, you know, and, and do these social transfers and social palliatives in a way. And I like, I like the, the, the reference to nonpartisan. We have to be very nonpartisan about it. Uh, unfortunately, the impression one gets that is that a lot of the social programs that we've had so far are extremely partisan, and that is very disappointing. Uh, a baby is for all the community, whether her, her parents, uh, whatever ethnic group, or whatever social setup, and so on and so forth. If we are administering, you know, uh, a social, you know, service or vaccination, it should be for everybody. Regardless, uh, the school feeding program, why select some people and not others? You know, some states and not others. This is childish and, uh, you know, government should not behave in that manner. Uh, and I hope, therefore, that, you know, this thing will cut across everybody. Because in this, today we are, we are one country, we are one people, we are one community. There are no differences of religion. There are no differences of uh, tribe. There are no differences even of social status. Uh, this thing, the coronavirus, is an enemy to, to all of humanity. And, 
you know, our leaders must do everything to bring all our people together, to, you know, restore that sense of community that we need each other at this time. And we need all the support that we can get from each other. So this is really the time to really rebuild the spirit of community. You know, regarding that, because some of them did actually say that those uh, intervention programs, uh, they just thought that, look, we reached out to most, if not all states with that, and that some of them said they don't understand how anyone can say that those details, are, those data are partisan. But speaking on a broader perspective, can we sustain this if this continues for three months? What should we be doing? How should our approach be? I know they talk about diversification, doing something about the agricultural sector, but if the mainstay of the economy keeps taking a hit, how far can we go? Well, you know, I put my trust in the resilience of the great Nigerian people. Uh, we are a very strong people. And when push comes to shove, we can be very strong and resilient. So I put my trust in that resilience of our people. And also, Nigerians are very generous. When we face imminent danger, there's a way in which communities tend to come together. Our kinship ties have not completely been eroded. And, you know, people will fall back on those kinship ties, on those bonds of solidarity that hold communities together. And, uh, well, nobody has a date for this thing, and uh, it will continue perhaps for a shorter time, perhaps for a longer time. We don't know. But I think wisdom requires that we prepare for the worst while hoping uh, for the best. Do you think maybe that's why the government is still holding off on this, I mean, the request by a lot of people, and in fact, the proposal by people for some form of stimulus package, stipend here and there, 10,000 hours. Do you think the government is thinking, wait, we need to hold on to the, the little in quote that we have, so don't let's throw the money around just yet. Do you think that's the thinking behind that? Well, I don't know. Uh, I cannot uh, think for government, and I cannot second guess what they're thinking is. Uh, one is hoping that somebody out there is doing some long-term strategic thinking uh, and, you know, preparing for any form of contingencies. Uh, I think some resources should be made available. Uh, the cash aspects worries me a little bit, not because I don't believe in it, but I'm worried about its administration. And especially when we saw uh, that, you know, this trader money was intensified just before the elections. And after the elections, it went quiet. And it was very iniquitous that uh, it seemed to have been selective, you know, and uh, like I said, it, it's childish. You don't run, run a government as if it's a child play. You run a government with a deep sense of responsibility and accountability. And uh, we haven't seen much of that. And I hope that uh, we will do better. So I, I hope that, you know, uh, we will live up to our responsibility as leaders uh, to be compassionate, uh, to be truthful, and to be just and fair. Of the, of the cash, do you think now is the time to actually give those out or should we hold off a bit? There will be some desperate situations whereby some kind of cash will help, but we must do it very responsibly. Uh, we but if must you... Could you, could you take a look at some of these now? Uh, some of the measures earlier announced by the federal government and the CBN, because they are already taking steps. So look at some of them, uh, if you can. 10 billion era uh, to Lagos, uh, 1 billion era to pharmaceutical firms as a result of the ongoing event. And then they're slashing the oil benchmark to $30 per barrel, expectedly. Then the CBN 
uh, this 1.1 trillion naira intervention fund to support critical sectors of the economy, and then 50 billion naira credit facility to by CBN to household and businesses hit by COVID. So those details they address the issues. How much of the issues do they address for you? Well, this is very welcome. And we could also add that uh, CBN has given a directive that commercial banks should exercise more forbearance on loans with a view to restructuring them to enable businesses and individuals that owe a lot of money uh, to be able to pay on better terms and much, you know, affordable terms. This is very welcome. And also, even the private sector, you know, we've seen people like Aliko Dangote, um, Jim Ovia, my friend Tony Elumelu, and others, including even Daddy Polinenche, Pastor Polinenche, contributing as much as uh, 2 billion naira. Uh, all of them have contribu contributed billions of naira. Uh, this is very welcome. And, uh, and kudos to them for this show of solidarity and patriotism. This money should be put together with whatever interventions the CBN has, and the money should be used judiciously to help the poorest people. Uh, I, I also, I don't want to sound religious, but this is a duty that God expects those who are privileged, uh, you know, to do. But there has to be a proper instrumental framework for it. It is not just money to be spent anyhow uh, and so on, but to be used judicious, judicious, judiciously, transparently, and accountably. Uh, I think the resources so far, uh, you know, in the kind of magnitude that one would hope for, the issue is the implementation. There has to be a proper framework for implementing these resources and for ensuring that they reach the people that actually need them. And that there's proper accountability on ground for how these monies are, are spent. Otherwise, I, I think we're in the, 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 uh, the right direction. Uh, my concern is that, yes, the president has spoken to the nation, but I think we need more confidence building because this coronavirus is becoming more about economics than even about the pandemic. The fear, the panic that people have is actually out of proportion with even the mortality rate. Uh, so far, I hear three people have died in this country. Uh, we have probably 111 odd, you know, people who have contracted it. But it is a very highly transmissible disease, and, and you know there's just no cure. So the panic is real, the the lockdown is real, the economic paralysis is real. Uh, already, economists are thinking, or in terms of the global depression of the 1930s. In fact, so far it's even worse than the 2008-2009 uh, subprime crisis. So there is a serious economic challenge here, and, we're, and it's in the sphere of what they call behavioral economics, the mass psychology of panic and, and, and fear. So we need our government to come out and, you know, restore confidence in our people. We need our people to be prevailed upon to be calm. We must remain calm. We must stick together. We must have a sense of community. And we must, uh, um, you know, stick together and, and help one another to survive this thing. Uh, I'm not seeing that leadership being exercised in that manner uh, compared to what, for example, Paul Kagame in Rwanda. He's going door to door, ensuring the food is given. The president of Rwanda is going to do it himself to ensure that things are done, not hiding somewhere and, and talking to the people through some, you know, form of uh, technological gadgets. Aifa, 
Okay, we, we, we'll, uh, we'll appreciate your thought this morning, uh, but uh, we'll attempt to see if we could get one of the members who are respons charged with that responsibility to address some of the issues we've raised. We'll attempt to get them on board in a moment and see what their response will be. But we do thank you for your thoughts this morning, Dr. Obadiah Malafa, an economist. So.